Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to be answering Chris's question here. And basically, he wants to know how to grab a name from an input field on page one. He says here an application form. Don't know exactly what he means by application form, so we're going to use an input field on the page, uh, but it would work the same for just about any other form. Whether it worked for an iframe or not, you'd have to test, but I do believe you should be able to pull this out of a form that was also embedded into your site. But whatever, to grab that name off, store it into local storage, and then be able to output it onto the next page in the funnel. And I thought I'd shot this uh, video a couple of years ago, and for some reason I cannot find it anywhere, so I'm shooting it again today because it's actually really quite simple on how to do this. The very first thing we have to do is we're just going to set up a very simple input form here. I have one input here for the first name, and then I have an email address because in ClickFunnels, in order to submit a page, you always have to have an email address no matter what. And on an application form or an opt-in page or anything else, you're always going to want to grab that email address anyway to build your list. And so what we first off we have to do is we have to store this value into what is known as local storage. Now let me go here to this page and I got that uh, page live and running and I got my name and a dummy email address in there. And we're going to come up over here to the left. The very first thing we're going to look at is what is known as local storage. So we're going to click on a little arrow. We're going to come down to application and then you're going to see local storage and inside of here will be the page that you currently have open. There might be other pages as well. Well, you click on that and you open it up and you're going to see in here we have um, what is already populated because I already ran this one time before. But we got this key value right here of first name and the value of, or we got the key of first name and the value of Dan. But you also see up here it says garlic and then the email address, and then another garlic, and my name there as well. And what garlic does is it's built into ClickFunnels. It's JavaScript library, I do believe, would be the proper term for it. And uh, what it does is it causes things in, in the terms to persist. So when it's done with using this garlic, it persists, it stays in the local storage. Now, that can be taken advantage of in a lot of ways. We could have, instead of doing what I'm doing here, we could have used the garlic for the first name or for the email address and saved ourselves one or two lines of code. Well, in fact, we probably wouldn't even have needed the code on the very first page. But in this case here, we got belt and suspenders. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hold of my first name and we are going to store it into this local storage with the key of first name and the value of, of course, that person's first name. So let's just take a look at that page first. So we're going to store the name to local storage. And so we're going to say here that when this button is clicked, so when somebody clicks on this button right here, and it has the ID of button 63430. Now, of course, you can use data title on this in order to capture it that way. But just to do this really quick, I'm just going to use the ID. And we're going to use the A part, the anchor text part of that element. And again, let me just show you that right, right off here real quick. We're just going to come down here. So here is the element itself. Where is it? Right here is the element itself. Here is the ID. And then inside of it, inside of that ID that we had right there, why does this keep sliding over, uh, where we have our anchor text inside of there. And generally speaking, when you're targeting any kind of a button, whether you're applying CSS or whatever you're doing, you generally apply that to the A tag part of the element. And let's go back here. And so we say that when we click on that, we want it to run this little function here. Now, also when you click on it, it is going to submit the page because we set the button to submit the page uh, upon the click. So it stores the email address into the ClickFunnels database and then also goes to the next page as well. And so what we said here is we want to come into this element, though, this, this element right here where we put in our first name. This is the ID for it. And we say we want to go in there 
and we want to grab out the first name. So type equals first name, and we want to grab the value that is being stored in there. So let's take a look at that as well. We're going to go here. We're going to open this up. And so here is the element that we are looking at. And so here is the ID. So again, in this case here, I'm just using an ID. Again, you could give it a data title because here is a data title right now. It just says input. And then we come down here and we say we want type equals first name. So we have to identify this somehow. Now, I could have just said ID and then input because that would be the first child element inside of the outer wrapper for this input. So we could have done it that way. It could have been the temp input 33432 space input. In this case here, I chose to use the attribute of type equals first name. And whenever you use an attribute, you want to make sure you put your little square brackets around it to indicate that it is an attribute. And again, there's a space in between here because it is the child element. And so you signify that from the, uh, by putting a space in there. And then what we're saying here is we want to grab the value. So no matter what somebody types in here, when that button is clicked, we're going to grab that value out and we are going to put it here into this variable of first name. So then in the next line here, we're going to say local storage, set the item of first name. So here's the variable we just had, and here is the key that you saw on the other page. So we're going to create this key inside of the local storage, and we're going to give it the value of my name in this case. That is it. Like I said, we may not even need this part here. We may have just been able to pull it out as the garlic, but the garlic string, when you look at it in here, let me just show you that. Um, it gets really funky, um, it's really long and funky and stuff. So you'd have to put in the entirety of this key right here, this one right here. You'd have to put that entirety of that key in there versus we just use the, the word first name. And because you just never know, I mean, this way here, belt and suspenders, we know we got this thing handled. So that is it for the very first page. Now on the next page you're going to go to, so this will be the next page in the funnel, so when the button is clicked to submit it, it automatically goes to the next page. If you wanted this page somewhere else, then you would have to do in your, well over here is where you'd have to do it, you'd have to come in here to your general settings and on submit, tell it to go somewhere else upon submission at that point, but you always gotta submit it so you can grab a hold of that email address. So now we come to the next page in the funnel, Again, this could not be any simpler. We just put in our standard text element. This is a headline element. And all I did is I put in the word name because that's where I want the name to go. This is our dummy text right here. And I put a strike through it. I did that simply because that's the simplest way to be able to come in now and identify where we want that name to go. So you could put this name into your document four, five, six different places if you want, all by doing exactly the same thing here. So we're gonna say here our first name, we're gonna create a variable again of first name, and we're gonna go out and we're going to get the item this time. So over here, we set the item, and here we're going to get the item, pretty simple. So we're gonna get the item that has the key of first name, and we're going to apply it to this variable of first name right here. Then what we're gonna say is this element right here has the, has the um, CSS ID of 40904 right there, and we got a space, and then we say strike. So we're looking for the child element inside of this main headline that has a strike through on it. So let's just take a look at that. So we got our strike through right there. But let me, at this point here, let's do this. We'll go on to the, well, no, we can't do that. Let me see here. Let me actually, uh, let's preview this page. That way we can see it. Okay, well, it still did it anyway because it was populated. But if we... Let me see, how can I do this? Let's just do it here, and we will look at this element. And so here we got our headline element right here. We have our H1 um, headline inside of it. So here's our wrapper, here's the headline. Then we have our bold text, which is all of it. And then we have right here 
the tag of strike. So that's what we're saying over here is go into this element right here. We got our temp headline right there. Come inside of it. Find that tag for strike inside of it. And now we want to set the text in there. And so the text is going to be our first name. So all you do is text, a couple brackets or parentheses, put in our variable here of first name goes right there. And then we need to change the attribute because if we did not change the style attribute in here, it has a line through it. So we got to get rid of that line through. And so we simply do, uh, we just do an attribute here and we're going to use our style attribute. You saw all this in the CSS training. So we're going to, uh, we're going to target the style attribute. And so then all we're going to say is text decoration of none, because this would be text decoration of strike is what it would be or strike through. I forget which one. Um, and so now we're going to just going to say basically turn that off. So we got text decoration of none right there. So when we run this now, we have our name, we have our whatever. So we're going to click on this. And I had an alert set on here, which I've since taken out and I didn't reload the page, but we'll do that and it will submit the page and we'll come through and the next page now has my name right there. So that's it. It realistically is a couple of lines of code. These may not even be necessary if you want to test it without and use the garlic instead over here. So what you would have to do over here is instead of the first name, this is where you put in that big long garlic string right there to pull that out of the local storage. So you can test it that way if you want, but I think it's safer to put it in there yourself and then make sure you turn off that strike through. Otherwise you can have a big ugly line through it. But here also at this point is because we're already putting in the style attribute, you can stylize it any way you want. You can underline it. You can make it a different color. You can make it a different font. You can make it a different font size, whatever you can do to text. You can put that all right in here now that we already have in the style attribute. So that is it. If you got any questions, just let me know.